just a day's work. All right. Over the past few years, we have been to the Overland Expo in several locations. And it was great having the Expo in our home state of Colorado this year. Our goal in this video is to show you what it's like to attend the Expo and to feature some of the things that we have never shown on SAR Trail before. So here are some of the things at this Expo that impressed us the most. If you're looking for a trailer that uses a rooftop tent, you will be hard pressed to find a better trailer than Turtleback. Their build quality is phenomenal and their trailers are fully functional. This is the Expedition trailer and it's pretty sweet. The ability to carry a fridge is nothing rare these days in off-road trailers, but this one allows you to carry a large fridge, larger than most trailers in its class. Another impressive feature of the Expedition trailer is the enormous kitchen with a really large amount of storage and countertop space. The electrical work on this trailer is second to none. All of the switches, wiring, connections for all the electrical work is neat and orderly and really looks well made. Okay, we're at Turtleback Trailers this morning. We've been spending a lot of time here in the past couple days just checking these things out because we've been impressed with every single thing that they make. But this is their new adventure trailer. I think it's just rolling out right now. First time we've seen it in person. I think the first time it's been at an expo. Different concept for them. It's a huge tent area, but let's check it out. So you can see awning looks like about eight feet tall and then kind of drops down to the sides. All of this, everything you see right here, and it sleeps a whole bunch of people, all of it folds right in, kind of just collapses, sandwiches over on top of the trailer. It becomes a really small, towable package. But man, this thing is enormous. Check it out. All right, so here it's huge. Once again, at the peak, it's got to be eight feet tall. And then right back here, just a couple feet from the back, it's right about six feet tall. Room for bunk beds here, chairs. You could do like a kitchen setup in here as well. I mean, it's really big. You can see the, the main bed of it. It looks to me like a king size bed. It's really large. It sits up at the top of the trailer and everything else folds and collapses on top of this when you're done and you're packing up. But man, this thing is enormous. It comes with a floor. It's a tubbed floor. So you're not gonna worry about rain flowing on around your campsite getting into your area. Really nice setup. Let's check out the front of it and we can see what else this thing has. Okay, back of the trailer, you got your spare, some roto packs. Wanted to show you the suspension here. It's got the Icon suspension made for Turtleback. Also has the airbag suspension, which will, which will allow you to level off your sleeping platform. So check it out underneath. So we're looking at the airbag suspension underneath. Which model is this one? This is the Air Ride. The Air Ride, yeah. and this is the Adventure trailer, right? This is the Adventure, correct. This is the new concept. We're going to be probably taking pre orders launching next month, and then production is going to start into December, beginning of January nice. 2022. So, as you see right now, those bags are completely compressed. Okay, got it. Right? You're still going to have the Icon shops with the reserve reservoir. Those are our shots, right? We're the prior of our turtle back and a retention strap there. Perfect. So the whole concept, especially with the adventure going to the air ride, if you look at this annex, it's only one height. Right. And it needs to be all the way down. But when I'm on the trail, I don't want to ride this low. So I, I can put my bags up, I can get a nice clearance height profile, get to camp, drop it down, level it out, fits for the annex. Now, after playing with this system and there's enough interest, we're like, that cradle is the same, the chassis is the same, we can start running the systems on the expedition nice. and things like that. Nice. Right? Yeah, that's really slick. Yeah. And then we can go to the front and I'll show you the controls. Okay, well another question for you. So, yeah, on this one, it's got a compressor on it, obviously. Uh-huh, it's up in the front. Do you have access with the port? For the no, compressor? not on this one. It's okay. not going to act as an external compressor okay. unit as well. It's all internal just for the bag system. Okay. Right? So there's your system, it sits right in there. Nice. And where did Barry put his remote? 
he might have it in the tent. Right. But you'll have a remote yep. that you can adjust up and down, A and B, back and forth. This will kick on, runs off of your battery system. Perfect. Right? But you'll have solar, so always top off your batteries, and it doesn't really drain that much. Right. And it goes pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. Great. So we'll ride just in there like that. Um, should be about the same with the Expedition. Mm -hmm. um, as we're playing with it and it's growing and developing, right. maybe we find another cool place for it. Right. Right? Right, for sure. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> nice. Okay, so up at the front, you've got your battery boxes, all your electric controls, max coupler hitch with the handbrake, super cool. Although this is the DO35, this is the uh, this is the Cruise Master hitch, so very nice. So you get space over here between your tongue box and where the trailer component living section is where you could put a fridge, a kitchenette, anything you wanted to build in here could, could happen. Or you can obviously mount bikes, probably even some motorcycles in there. Hey, what's up, Nate? How's it going, guys? Good. Another good day? Another good day. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so you can see on this side, check out how big the awning is. Over there, extending out. It's just like a whole roof system on this. And then this is the other back side. This is where we were just inside. But just to give you an idea of how big this really is, before we even get to the door, my arms are six feet four inches. And then you still have another four feet of just living space. So over 10 feet of living space in there, just in length, before you even get you know into the door and into the, into the bed setup. It's pretty cool. This one for a large family, seems like it's a good option and if it's you know that it's made by Turtleback so you know the quality is second to none. All right we're checking out Escapade trailers this is a trailer that we've never seen before in person online or anywhere so let's check them out they got a cool concept. Okay so your kitchen opens up huge it's got this massive tailgate that swing, swings away some shelves here fridge slide out a side fridge which is a cool concept you don't use up so much interior space on the trailer shelving paper towels magnetic utensil holder cool concept you can obviously put on a 270 they got a bat wing on it right here but you can get your awning on let's go check out the bed system inside and see if it's different or a similar concept that we've seen before So cool trailer, this one, something we're seeing now is more, more sleep-in off-road trailers are putting in a bunk bed so you can have the kids a place to sleep. So how do you like that, baby? I like it. Is it long enough for you? Let me try it. All right, you try it out and see so we can kind of give an idea of how long that is. It is. I feel like it's really comfortable in here. It's good, right? Okay, so Bailey's five feet tall. She sleeps in there okay. If she was a little bit taller, probably couldn't do it. But you got about five feet there, which is pretty nice. This one has an air conditioner built in, so if you really want to glamp a bit, or you stay in the desert where it's just crazy hot, you got an AC. The lighting up here is pretty nice. I like it. Some lamp, lamp lights as well, some reading lights. Got a max fan up in the top. Cushioning is nice. Looks like about a six inch mattress. It's a pretty cool trailer. Another nice feature I like is the dual pane windows. Large windows, dual pane gives you better insulation. Okay, so we're with, with Tim with Storyteller Overland. And if you haven't been around Overland Expo this year, in the past couple years, it's really a lot of vans, a lot of these off-road capable vans are becoming like all the rage. So Tim, Storyteller, you know, why'd you do it? What's what's the story behind it? Yeah, so Storyteller, uh, we started as a as a way to get kind of the custom van world, uh, the custom fit and finish and all that into a manufactured manufactured package uh, that doesn't have options so that we can keep the quality super high, but we can offer it to a dealer network uh, that allows people to get into these at a lower cost of entry 
um, be able to finance them for 20 years. Um, but the purpose of what we do is to be fully off-grid uh, and, and fully off-road capable. Um, so you have you know, the overlanding experience, uh, you got a lot of gear, you got a lot of stuff to pack, it takes a long time. Sure. These are kind of your turnkey, you can hop in, you can already have everything ready to go in there. Uh, we do have full timers that full time in them and travel the United States and just really super enhance their life by what these vans are capable of. We've met a lot of people here at the expo that live in full time in vans where they yeah. work, yeah. You, know, you can set up your laptop, you got a, you got your whole office set up in here, yes. or they can come out under the awning and work there as well. Yeah. And you can get to some really gorgeous places with a lot of comfort too. Yeah, yeah, you can show up at Red Rocks and open up your van and get your laptop out, and work for three, four hours, then go on a hike, come back and finish up some emails. Yeah. Um, so we have a power system that is 12 kilowatts. So, you know, you, there's hot times, there's cold times, there's all that, and we can run an AC for 10 to, 13 hours non-stop on high, uh, and that's a that's a really big deal for people. Pets that travel, um, the people that work, you know, full time. They're not just right. out camping, um, that kind of stuff. So it's so running the AC is that on propane on solar? It's on lithium battery. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. So I guess you got solar on the roof. Yep, we have a little solar on the roof. Um, we have a big battery bank um, that allow, and we run it on the 144 4x4 spinner chassis. Okay. Yep. So that allows you to get into any national park, to any parking spot. Uh, it's very, very versatile. It fits in your parking spot in your home, um, and so you just you use it probably. What I've been told is around 60% more than people who have a trailer or something like that. Hmm. And so just the usage is is incredible. So. Entry level, what's the price to get in before you start getting crazy with options? Yeah, so we have four, we actually have four trim levels. Uh, the first one is a, we call it a Ford Mode LT, um, and that's at 153 uh, and some change. They're all on some two. We, we do, you know, you always remember things by little weird things, so it's like 149, 7, 743, right? Right, right. Um, but so 153, and then we have a classic that is 157. We have a Stealth, which is this. Uh, a gray one here that's 169 and then the full full beast we call it that has suspension upgrades and lights and compressors and kind of just everything you need for, for overlanding is uh, 189 or 198 sorry 198 yep they're really nice the expo this year has so many different kinds of 4x4 vans represented with so many different styles and capabilities Throughout the day, you can find the food areas bustling with people and a mix of local artists playing some really great music. Quarantine made me drunk. Yeah, I know a good wine that pairs really well with crying. Oh, oh, quarantine made me drunk. Quarantine made me fat. Quarantine made me fat Yeah, I ate all the snacks Now my buttons don't snap Ooh, ooh quarantine made me fat So, if you haven't seen Venture Ford on YouTube, you gotta check it out. This is the man behind it. We've been watching his work for a couple years now, and it, it just is a, in our opinion at least, it's just a super honest, like approach to this is what your life is Thank and it's you. just straight up this is him without any I, I don't know I know you edit but I, I don't do. think I don't think you edit out the reality no no I do not um, the backstory is that I used to be a web developer and I got burnout. out I had trouble meeting deadlines and sustaining the job I became lonely depressed so what happened was I had my orange Jeep set up for overland travel, and I simply left my apartment and I hit the road for months. So wait, lonely, depressed, and you went out in the wilderness on your own? Yes, okay. yes, this was not, this was not a calculated <laughs> endeavor by any means. This was uh, the result of, it wasn't dire, but a professional breakdown where I wanted to figure out what was next in my life. So I left, I hit the road, and I started putting my journey to video, recording my experiences every week, and then every Friday I would publish to YouTube. 
I did it mainly for myself to chronicle my journey and never really expected it to gain traction or catch on, but uh, you guys started watching. And, um, and years later, now it's almost five years later, I've been able to grow and sustain myself doing only YouTube videos. So Venture Forward is about exploring the road less traveled and uh, mobile living and adventure. And I know most of the vi videos have an orange Jeep on the front, on the thumbnail image, but honestly, it's uh, about exploration and this beautiful landscape in which we live. I don't think that could be said any better. That is, and that's exactly what you'll see on his channel. That's what we've seen for years now. And we've taken inspiration from you, encouragement from you, seen the successes, seen the failures, seen you get your van Yes. stuck on the side of the road or side of the trail <laughs> yeah um, but yeah I, I appreciate the genuineness of what the work you do thank you thank you I'm grateful for everyone uh, who watches so that makes it possible cool all right awesome after not having any overland expos in 2020 it was nice that the crowds turned out this year in abundance So we're here with Josh from Lava Box Portable Campfire, and he's got like the coolest solution <laughs> for like we live, we're here in Colorado. He lives in Colorado as well. We're always under fire bans. Yeah. We go to Utah and Arizona, always under fire bans. But this you can still use. That's right. So That's right. Tell us kind of quick concept about why you started doing this. Absolutely. So the original build I built many years ago, and then just recently uh, put in my patent for it. But it actually I wanted a compact fire pit that I wanted a lot more fire. Uh, I wanted it to pass stage two fire restrictions and uh, I wanted it to be really compact, fit on the rig, fit on my raft and uh, be fully adjustable. So one of the key components to getting around the fire bands, to keeping our forest safe is to be able to turn it off and to be able to kick it over without having anything catch on fire. Nice. And so what I wanted to do is be able to, you know, first of all, be able to just kick it off whenever I'm ready and be able to really blast it and have a nice big fire. Uh, and so, you know, I have two or three families around it. I want it to be enough fire for them. And so this one burns at 120,000 BTUs, which is a lot of fire. Yeah. <laughs> and then our bigger model, this is, this is called the Tabletop Volcano. And then our bigger model is called the Krakatoa Fire Breather, and it's 200,000 BTUs of fire. Wow. So it's a, you know, 20, fan, 20 person raft trip, uh, hanging out at the ski slope after a pre-ski. That's your, that's your go-to, pull it out of the truck and light it. Nice. Well, and you guys know we've been carrying around that round one for us whenever we're under fire ban, and it's not really solid. You got to be really careful with it. If you, if you even step on it, you're going to destroy it. Right. And it's awkward and bulky, but that it looks like an ammo box. It is a it is a ammo box 100%. I have a new, brand new made, and you can throw. I have a funny video of me throwing it off a cliff, <laughs> and then walking down and lighting it. Um, these are tough as nails. It's one single pipe, very very simple. You can fill it up with water, pour it out, fill it with sand, pour it out, light it, no problem. Uh, it actually does float. So if you have it in a canoe or if you're in a sure. raft and you dump your raft, floats, no problem. And you turn it back on and light it. It's indestructible, lasts forever, and they're cool. <laughs> they're super cool. Super cool. All right, we're getting that one from you. Yes! So we're going to order it. I think you don't have them in stock right now. You're waiting Not yet. For some Almost there. All right, so we're getting one of those. You're going to see us use it a lot, but already we're sold. Done deal. I doubt. For sure. <laughs> Sweet. At the expo, there were several avenues to test your off-road driving skills and learn from instructors. For people new to overlanding and 4 x 4 this is a great opportunity to learn basic skills. And there's also the opportunity to learn advanced techniques as well.
went back to Turtleback for the merchandise raffle. Bailey got to help give out prizes with some of her new friends, and wouldn't you know it, Natalie came home with some brand new Turtleback swag. Last three digits is five, two, two. There you go, yeah, come on, woo! Five, two, three. Five, two, three, yeah! You're like, yes! All right, next ticket, five, one, three. Hey! Hey! Thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to do another shirt and hat combo. All right, now everybody's ready for the big one, the new gear bag. And tickets inside. And a bunch of tickets inside of it that are all yours. Number is five. One, two. Woo! Yeah! Awesome. Thank you guys so much. So this is Travis with Outer Limit Supply, and they have these cool medic bags and boxes that we're picking up one. We're ordering one today. And Travis, tell us, tell us your background first off. How did you end up doing this, and then and then why? Absolutely. So by trade, I'm a paramedic firefighter. I work here locally in town for a department. And really what it came down to was I needed a first aid kit for myself. And went online. Back then, there was zero choices on the market. Where, where you at, um, not anything that was actually going to be effective in making a difference. Sure. So that's really how Outer Limit Supply started. It's then kind of morphed from, from first aid to life-saving gear. So anything under that umbrella, for instance, we have a whole water fuel purification system that we're debuting for this show, but really our bread and butter is the medical kits. So, um, so that's a little bit about my background, uh, about the company. Ethically, we're not putting a single first aid kit on the market that will not absolutely stop bleeding. So every single kit from us, you're going to get a tourniquet, you're going to get chest seals, you're going to get a pressure dressing, you're going to get wound packing. Um, it's all a cart. We're not given choices. So, well, and, and that's big because we've been, I'll, I'll be straight up honest, for the first couple of years of overlanding, we were very skimpy. Natalie sure. checked us some bandages and stuff like right, that. Yeah, yeah. And then we're up on Imogene Pass a couple okay. years ago, and Bailey steps on a nail right through her foot. How'd that feel? I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so, yeah. since that time, we've been saying, all right, we have to be better prepared. Yeah. And you know, all of that stuff, it sounds fancy, you know, you hear about police environment and you know, you see stuff on TV. Those items that I mentioned are so easy to use. I mean, it literally takes 10 minutes on YouTube University learning how to use a cat tourniquet right. or how do you apply a chest seal. Well, it's just a sticker. We all have stickers everywhere. Right, right. It's the same thing. So, um, really easy to use. On our waterproof cases, we list out the five steps to controlling bleeding and improving the airway and, you know, all the way through. So if somebody's lost a lot of blood, you got to cover them up, even on a day like today, because they're going to become hypothermic. Um, even the psychological part, that's step five. Just, just saying, you're going to make it, I'm here, has such a huge survival, survival rate. Um, it's just massive. So, um, one thing that we really liked that sold us yesterday when we walked through here was on your boxes, and we'll show those. On your boxes, you have it like instructions. Yep, that's what I was just referring to. Yeah, those five steps, and that's you know we recommend that you read them in this setting, not in the moment. But uh, if you're familiar with those five steps, you'll absolutely save a life. Yep. Um, the last thing, and we probably didn't tell you this yesterday, but it, it needs to be pushed a little bit more. If you can prove to me that you saved a life, I will 100% resend you a brand new first aid kit. Nice. So if you've deployed a tourniquet, that's a life-saving thing. Um, I'll replace all the, at least the contents or whatever you need free of charge. Wow, that's cool. I mean, the reality is I need people. As, a, as the professional side of me, when I show up on the ladder truck, I need people that are right there already working. 
Bleeding control is three to five minutes. Wow. If it's an arterial bleed, five minutes tops. Wow. The standard response in America right now for any agency at best is eight minutes. So you're already you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in big so, trouble. Yeah. So I mean, I recognize this pretty quick. That a lot of these injuries were survivable. Right. Nobody was doing anything. Right. And we got there too late. Nobody was. Nobody that was on site was right. prepared, and they're just like, "Oh, I called 911." Yep. Good luck. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I hope that fire engine isn't already on another call or right. at training or you name the scenario. I mean, it, it happens more frequently than people realize. Well, if you're out overlanding and you're out in the woods, that response time goes from eight minutes to hours, maybe. Could be days. Could be days. Um, here in Denver, for instance, a lot of times we get an inversion layer. Yep. Helicopters don't fly in there. Right. Right. Um, you know, even just five miles down a dirt road could potentially, I mean, if you're running the Rubicon Trail, that's why they have three helicopter pads on that trail because it's going to take them an hour and a half, three hours to get to you. Right. Even in a, on a side by side. Wow. So um, we all do this to get away from everything. Right. right? It's kind of a flaw in that that nobody's thought about right. as far as self reliance. That's nice. So great. So you got a patch and then you can peel off. Yep. Absolutely. Take care of a puncture. Yep. Yeah, right. Uh, it might be hard to zoom in on, but this is basically what it is. Okay. Um, it's a two pack. Um, I don't like going down this road, but I'll say it for the video. If it comes to a gunshot wound of some sort, right. there's usually an entrance and an exit. Right. So you right. need to cover both sides. Good call. So that's a good call. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> ethically, we're not going to send you out there with any false hope. Right. You will absolutely be able to make a difference if you spend a little bit of time figuring out and learning how to use the items. And you don't have to go to paramedic school or become a doctor. Right. It's 15 minutes. We just recommend, you know, cleaning control classes are generally free. Most of the libraries will do them. So just taking that class is going to make a little difference. And, and what we're trying to accomplish out in the trail or out in the woods somewhere is keeping you stable, keeping buying time. Is that right? 100%. Yeah. yeah, it's not, if the injury is significant enough, we'll never promote continuing on. Sure. It's manage the situation, make a call on how you're going to go about it. Whether it's your Garmin in reach, you're going to turn around and take the trail out, or maybe the destination is the fastest route. Right. You know, a lot of people don't think about helicopters and how we use them, but if you're in the middle of a forested trail, you're going to have to get to an open valley. Right. You know, so it's something to consider that you may have to keep going and rendezvous right. um, and manage the situation too. Sure. So good point. It can be very difficult. Uh, you know, for us. That includes not even rating our first aid kits. Right. We do not put a number of people that they're used for. Uh, the reality is our biggest kit, I've seen injuries where I could have used three of them. Well, you know, so. On a single person. On a single person, yeah. Usually it involves a motorcycle and another car that got tangled up, but um, that's why we don't rate them. Okay. Um, you know, if we did, I'm not even going to go into it. Right. But you're well prepared without our limits supply. Have on your all right, so Travis, how do they find you? How do they find your product? Yeah, absolutely. We're on Instagram, Facebook. Um, we have our website, OuterLimitsSupply.com. Perfect. Uh, All right, we're sold. We're picking up something. Appreciate it, Travis. Thank you. Right behind me is a class that we've been in, and it's really good. It's overlanding as a family, and it addresses a lot of things like health care. How do you do health care when you're traveling on the road? Block? How do you educate your children? How do you pay for things? How do you sustain fuel and food and clothing and all that kind of stuff and man this class has been really helpful for us because we want to do more longer term overlanding do some full-time overlanding and learning from people that have been doing it for eight even ten years it's been huge for us a rebel sprinter van to europe we did 23 countries over there um, in six months, and oh, yeah. this is the panel, and we're all friends. <laughs> we're all friends. Yeah, so we've known the gonna, Highlands a long time. So. <laughs> we're just going to be here to answer your questions. Uh, she definitely appreciates being outside and um, doing that. But you know, she's 17. Her friends are everything, and so it's really important that she's able to keep those connections as well. Did she ever object or give any resistance, or was she a happy camper from day one? <laughs> Because we have two teenagers we'll be taking, and, and I've, I've struggled with that. Like, if they're like, no, I absolutely don't want to go. If I go kayaking, I want to take a fishing pole. I want to take a rifle yeah. so I can go hunting. I want to do all these things. How do you manage all of your hobbies in one little van? With, when you sold everything, and then you want to do all these things, how do you, how do you manage that? Well, there's, um, they're selling they, everything, and yeah. then they're selling everything, right? right? Yeah. 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 
let's say we um we I don't know we we got rid of the the stuff that bogged you down. But you still have a uh, kind of a I mean home base. Some, no, no, no home base. No. We've got some stuff stashed at Kathy's mom's house okay. in Arkansas, and so the stuff like like my motorcycle is there right now, and then this leg that we're on, you know, I didn't need it, so I left it there. So we've got it, you know, we've got kayaks scattered all over the world. Okay, we're at 23-0. You guys have seen us do feature a lot of 23-0 products. Their awnings, their uh, soft-sided tent. But now we're gonna look at their hard side clamshell tent. This thing just came out. This is our first time seeing it in person, but wanted to show you guys because these things are becoming really popular now and the companies that are making them are getting really creative and putting out some really good quality. Okay, so like a lot of 23-0 awnings and tents, this one has that blacked out light suppression technology. I'm gonna get up in there and show you how dark it gets. Even with everything open, you're gonna get a good feel for it. So this is Justin, the owner of 23-0, and he's gonna tell us what makes this one different than some of the other ones on the market and kind of why you did it, the way you did. That's, and that is a great question. The why is the main question, and we, we kind of, um, watched what happened on the marketplace with all of the other tents of a similar ilk um, and we realized that there are a couple of challenges that all of them had and nobody had answered. Um, if you are over six foot five, there's a whole bunch of the tents that look just like this that you won't fit into. So we made sure this thing's seven foot two in internal length. Six foot seven, size 13 shoe, you're still gonna get a good night's sleep. So if you're tall, this is comfortable. We put a three inch mattress with a uh, anti condensation mat underneath, but we still made enough room inside there to put your ladder and your sleeping bag. That was the other thing. You can't do it with a lot of these tents. Right. Ladder and sleeping bag just doesn't fit. Third one, and most important, is we used our LST fabric. So it's got the LST lining inside. For you, the guys that don't know what that is, zip the tent up, it is black yeah. inside. So there's some three differences that we made that would just make it a little bit different to everything else that's out there. Sure. We're seeing a lot of this stuff come out because they are quick, they're fast, they're easy. Limitations for a family, but for a couple, this is about as simple as it gets. So what's the weight on this one? Uh, 173. Okay, that's not bad. Yep, so it's all aluminum. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then can you do like a gear wrap across the top or a bars? We can, and we didn't get, they're still in the box. There's the picture of them, you'll see the picture online as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, you've got two pair of crossbars, so you can put your bike rack, canoe rack, fishing rods, anything else up there that you need to. So, and I'd say at 3,500 bucks, that's, that's a reasonable price. We've seen them much higher, and we've seen some that don't look like they're made very well for a similar price. That one's sharp. Thank you, thank you. It was, it was a long time coming. Um, we've been in the process to build this one for nearly two years. So it's taken its time, but I think we've got it right. So yeah, it looks yeah. great, yeah. really great. Very cool. Thank you, Jeff. Awesome, Justin. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yep. See you. All right, let's head on up. Nice telescoping ladder. Really nice ladder. Lots of adjustment. Just up. So looking out the back, you can see out of the awning. And then you can see how dark it gets. You know, it's bright, middle of the day right now. And all of this light suppression technology is knocking out all of the light. So you can see that crack right through there. There are some sunlights coming through because it's unzipped. Really cool, very comfortable up in here right now. Really beautiful clamshell tent. All right, so you guys, if you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you know that we have huge respect for Patriot campers. They have really upped the bar of overlanding off-roading trailers. We want to see their new model they've come out with, the X3. It's a sleep-in, a different approach for them. If you haven't seen it already, you want to check this one out. Okay, so very similar to the other Patriot models. You got the slide-out kitchen here. You got your fridge, your sink. You got a lot of countertop space, which has kind of been their the benchmark they have set. Uh, different awning on this one, but it's still a similar Patriot style awning. What really sets this one apart is the way the inside opens up. So let's check that out. Okay, so this is the interior of the X3. This area can be a dining table right here, uh, has seating obviously. So you could actually have a workstation here. You could work from a laptop or something like that. Behind us is a coffee pot, a coffee maker, access to your fridge is right here, your fridge freezer, when that slides underneath. And then you have a bed over here. It looks like, I don't think it's quite a king size, but it's a very good size bed. And then this area here that, I'm, that Bailey and I are sitting in, 
turns into a bed as well. So I think you could sleep here comfortably two adults, two children, and it started to warm up today, but it's very comfortable in here. I'm not sure how this is, what the canvas is that they're using on this one, but it's very comfortable in here. The X3 is a new direction for Patriot campers, but it doesn't steer too far away from its heritage of incredible off-road capability, an amazing kitchen, and just all around fantastic build quality. Another hit by Patriot campers. If you're looking for something with more interior space, sleeps a lot more people, but can still go off-road, check this one out. This is an Imperial Outdoors trailer. This is Sean, who's gonna tell us a little bit about it. Cool trailer for, like, this will hold some people, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, this will sleep up to seven people in this configuration. Nice. And it looks like it's rugged enough with the suspension, the tires, that you can take it on a trail. You can take it anywhere you want, especially with a six inch box steel frame. It's basically a rock slider all the way around the trailer. Nice. Put a jack on it anywhere you want to. Okay. Bang it on anything you want to. Hydraulic adjust suspension. So at the push of a button, it'll come down 12 inches from where it is now. Really? Sure so this is fully raised? This is fully raised right now. Uh, that's great for off-road height, and then you'll lower it down for, one, a better wind profile. Right. Two, if you're loading a motorcycle or something in the rear, it'll give you a better approach angle. And also, if you're not climbing so high up into the steps. 12 inches of suspension lift on it. Correct. 12 that's inches huge. of clearance adjustment. Wow. You have about 10 inches of travel between the tires as well. Yep. That's huge. So after the box, six inch box steel frame, you've got a three inch thick sidewall with a high density foam in there. And the sidewall is actually mounted onto the frame with three eighths inch bolts. Your typical RV is gonna have outriggers that the wall is mounted onto. So a torque and deflection going on a rough trail, sure. It's gonna just completely ruin your cabinets inside. Right. This one, no torque and deflection at all. Right. And then above that, you have a six inch thick ceiling. So you got, do you know your R factor? Uh, your ceiling is R29. Nice. Your walls are R13. That's so pretty good. Down to minus 40 or up to 140 degrees. How much fresh water do you hold? 30 gallons of fresh water, okay. 30 gallons of gray water. Okay. It's an on-demand water heater in there and a dry flush toilet. Okay, nice. Black water doesn't really flow at minus 40, so right. you get a dry flush toilet. It's like a diaper genie. Okay, gotcha. But a vacuum seals it up. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, so how is it powered? Is it propane, solar? So you've got 200 watts of solar on the roof. This particular model has AGM batteries on it. Okay. Um, you have a 12 volt refrigerator. Your furnace runs off the 12 volt system. Your stove, well, 12 volt and propane. Your stove top runs off of propane as well. So you need a generator for AC. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Right. Onboard air compressor as well. So if you have to air down for any reason, you can air back up. Yeah, and you got some good tires on here too. You serve Maxxis razors with two spares on the rear, as well as a high lift jack. Like it. Awesome. All right, we're checking out Mission Overland Trailers. This is a company we've seen online, haven't seen their trailers in person, but they got a cool look about them. And it's a sleep-in that has a pop-up that comes up, and I think that's where your bed's gonna go. But let's check it out and see. So, large dual pane window right here. You got your slide-out kitchen, fridge that slides out right up in front, and you know, you attach a good size awning, and you got plenty of shade out here. I want to go inside and see what makes this one really unique. You can see it when we were outside before that pop-up, but let's check out what makes this one different from most of the other ones we've seen. Okay, so we're at the back of the trailer now. This is where you go inside. It has this uh, like rear door. We've seen something similar to this on the Bruder EXP6, but this is how you go in. You got steps coming inside, so let's check it out. Okay, so I get how it works. So I thought this might be a bunk right here. But instead, your bed is here. This just gives you an area where you can stand up inside your trailer. And you can come in, take care of your things, change your clothes. Obviously, you got your electric control panels. You can eat inside here. You've got a table. But, you know, you can stand up. Toward the back of the trailer, it looks like it's at least seven feet tall, and then it wedges down toward the front where your bed is. So pretty cool live-in design. We haven't seen this before in person. You got some nice windows on your canvas pop-up. And then it'll all fold down and give you a nice short trailer when you're heading down the trail or down the road. Okay, we're hanging out at Expedition Trailers. This is a trailer we haven't seen before. And which is really cool about this expo, we've seen a lot of stuff that we've just never seen at East and West. Not sure if it's regional 
or if it's just because a lot of people took a lot of time and created some new product. But Expedition Trailers, let's check it out. This is a sleeping. It offers a rooftop tent as well. Pretty cool kitchen setup, so let's check it out. So here's your tongue box, hot water heater, lots and lots of storage in this, and then you have a rack up above this box as well for things like firewood or whatever other gear that you would have. Okay, so we're on the back side of the Expedition trailer. This is the kitchen setup. You got a large Dometic fridge that slides out to the side. Gives you a fold down working space. Large cutting board over here that's also got storage underneath. Another cool thing we haven't seen in other trailers is there is really, I mean, it's packed full. Somebody's using this trailer full time right now, but there's a lot of storage in, in these boxes. They're pretty deep. You just can't see all the way in because they're being used. Then you have a prep space right here, more storage, more storage up here. And then it comes already, this folds up, the lift gate kind of back here, or the, the tailgate kind of folds up and already gives you some shade if you don't have like a wraparound awning or something. Okay, so this is passenger side. So the fridge comes out driver's side. Passenger, passenger side, you have a dual burner, you got a sink, you got some of your water controls here and another another area with some storage so really smart set it gives all of your kitchen around the back side where it's accessible and it's really folds out to be a big big kitchen okay so inside the expedition trailer looks to me like about a queen size bed setup they have the cushion folded up now as a couch you got storage up above you got a fan looks like all aluminum inside so really nice setup in here and then of course you also have your rooftop tent sleeping up above so you can sleep husband wife couple children so guys this is the end of the expo it is day number three they're buttoning it up closing it out we have stayed to the last minute i want to tell you this has been an incredible expo for the first time being in uh, in colorado it's been really incredible and we made a bunch of new friends Wanted to thank the people that have seen Star Trail videos that have come up to us, approached us, and said hi, gave us encouragement, and shared your stories with us. That's been really huge for us. And I hope you guys enjoyed all of this cool stuff, this amazing stuff that we've showed you. Hopefully it's a lot of things that you've never seen before. And if there's other stuff you're looking at expo related, we have a bunch of other expo videos. We're going to link those for you as well in the description box from Expo in East, Expo in West. Because we didn't cover everything here, we just covered the stuff that was new to us. And you can go back and see the other stuff on those other videos. We just didn't want to do a bunch of repeat stuff. So thanks a lot. Thanks for checking out SAR Trail. If you haven't yet, subscribe to SAR Trail. We're going to show you a lot of our story, our family overlanding adventures that we do, and then show you more stuff like these things when we can. Thanks a lot.